this lecture, I'm going to talk about some more important characteristics of stars. We know now a lot about the temperature of stars. We know a lot, a lot about the spectra of stars, their composition, um, what transitions are going on, which is another way of figuring out the temperature. We can talk about the spectral class. And in this one, of course, there's another very, very important characteristic of stars, which is that they are bright. Stars give off light. That's sort of the most fundamental thing that we know about stars. Uh, even our preschoolers sing twinkle, twinkle, little star, and that's about how brightness or how much brightness they have. So um, what we want to talk about in this lecture is the brightness. But it turns out that brightness is kind of an ambiguous concept. There's sort of a couple of things we could um, define it as. And so to begin with, let's think about something more every day. Let's think about a light bulb. And just pause the video for a second and think about what sort of things might affect how bright a light bulb appears to you. So pause it for a second, think about it, and then restart. So now, uh, hopefully you've thought of a few things. One is, of course, how much light the bulb is giving off. So it's sort of an intrinsic characteristic. Based on how many watts the light bulb has. A 100 watt light bulb is brighter than a 40 watt light bulb. If you've ever played with both of those, uh, you've seen that the amount of light that they give off is different, and so one appears brighter. And that was like the power of the light bulb or the wattage, something like that. That's how much light they're actually giving off. But that's not the only thing, because if you imagine what if I had a light bulb and I stood way down at the other end of a long hallway, maybe uh, maybe I'm down um, by the upper school office and you're at the other end of the senior hallway. That light bulb is not going to look very bright to you. But if I take the same light bulb and I shine it right in your face, I take it in a flashlight and I just shove that thing in your face, it's going to look really, really bright then. So how far away you are from the light bulb does affect it. So your distance affects it. And another thing does affect it. We're not going to talk about this very much in here, but it's a very important thing for astronomers is, um, is there anything in the way, um, any intervening material? If you did this same experiment on a foggy day through fog, the light bulb would seem not as bright as it would on a very clear day. And this is something that we encounter in astronomy that sometimes there's clouds of gas or dust in our way when we're looking at stars, and so they don't seem as bright as they really are. But again, we're not going to deal with that. We're mainly going to focus on the amount of light given off and the distance. So when we talk about light from stars, we distinguish between two things. We distinguish between the amount of light that's actually given off and how bright it seems to be. And the term that astronomers use, so good vocabulary word, let's make sure we memorize this one, luminosity is the total amount of energy given off by a star every second. This is the same thing as like the number of watts that a light bulb gives off. So the luminosity of a light bulb might be 100 watts or it might be 40 watts. It's that number that's printed on the light bulb and that is intrinsic. It doesn't you know, it doesn't matter where I'm standing or what's in the way, that light bulb gives off 100 watts of light. But by contrast, we have the apparent brightness of the star, which is how bright it seems to be. And this is defined to be the amount of power per square meter that's measured at a certain distance from the star. So if you look at this picture, here we're imagining, say, the sun, and here's a distance of one astronomical unit away. Now, at that distance, the light from the sun is spread out over a whole sphere whose radius is 1 AU. And we could divide that sphere up into square meters. 
So the apparent brightness is how much of the light you get in just that one little square meter. If I go to two astronomical units away, uh, that same section of light is now spread out over four square meters. So it's not going to appear as bright. And if I go three astronomical units away, that same amount of light is spread now over nine square meters of area. So there's a connection between how much area, how much surface area the light is spread out over and how bright it's going to appear. If you do some math and calculate that, the apparent brightness of a star is given by its luminosity, the intrinsic thing, the watts, divided by the surface area of the sphere whose radius is this distance that you are away from the star. And the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi times the distance squared. By the way, if you are wondering what do these numbers typically look like, remember the sun is a very average star, very typical sort of luminosity. Now, of course, it's very bright. It has a very large apparent brightness because we are very, very close to the sun in terms of astronomical distance. Um, so it's got a very big apparent brightness. Its luminosity is rather average, which is about 3.8 times 10 to the 26th watts. So that's a typical luminosity for a star. But there's actually a very huge range. You can be 10,000 times more than this, 10,000 times less than this, and you can have different kinds of stars with those luminosities. Stars have a very broad range of luminosities you're going to find. So how do we do problems with this? So I'm going to look at problem 1549 in the book. We'll go through that. This is number one in your packet. In 1549, we're talking about Alpha Centauri, our favorite nearest star other than the sun. And we're told that it is 4.4 light years away. So that's the distance to it. And we're told that it has an apparent brightness of um, 2.7 times 10 to the negative eighth watts per square meter. For comparison, the sun has about 1,300 watts per square meter. So this is a trillion times less than the sun. That gives you a comparison between a star and the sun. And this is the closest star other than the sun. So anything else would be even fainter. And we're going to try in part A to figure out the luminosity. Now, before we use our formula, we need to get our distance into meters. In that formula, we want a distance in meters. So I'm going to convert light years to meters. If you remember from the last unit, or it tells you in this problem in the book, one light year is 9.5 times 10 to the 15 meters. So we've done this before. We've done this exact one before whether or not you remember it. Well, that comes out to 4.18 times 10 to the 16 meters. So if I want to find the luminosity, the apparent brightness is equal to the luminosity divided by 4 pi times the distance squared. So I can say 2.7 times 10 to the negative 8 is equal to the luminosity divided by 4 pi Make sure that you put this distance in parentheses. We've got to make sure that the 16 gets squared. If you use the EE button on your calculator, you'll be fine. Uh, but make sure that you do. So I'll just do this denominator. Comes out to a very big number, 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 34th. And so multiply both sides by that, and we can get the actual luminosity. And that's about 5.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. And you'll see that's reasonably comparable to the sun. It's a little bit brighter than the sun. The sun was uh, 3.8 times 10 to the 26th. So somewhat brighter or somewhat more luminous than the sun, despite the fact that it's much farther away. Part 
part B, we're supposed to be, where would I have to take a 100 watt light bulb so that it would have the same apparent brightness as Alpha Centauri A? So, we want the same apparent brightness, 2.7 times 10 to the negative 8, but I'm taking a 100 watt light bulb. The 100 watts is the luminosity. We're going to solve for D. So, 4 pi times the distance squared is going to be 100 over 2.7 times 10 to the negative 8. And doing some algebra. You know, want to try this on your own. Make sure you get how the algebra works. And be careful to make sure that you um, divide everything correctly. That's pretty important. People tend to mess this up. Eight. And so D, if I take the square root, is about 17,000 meters away. So if you took a light bulb and held it 17 kilometers away, so something like 15 miles away, then it would seem about as bright as a typical star if you had a completely clear sky and an open field to see it on.